Now, I'm going to ask you a question, though. Are you ready to eat some crow, Mavs fans, MFFLs? <laughs> You've heard me eating crow, so I want to turn the tables here and ask if anybody wants to in regards to something very specific with this Mavericks team. You know, and, and, and sometimes I, I eat crow when, I, when I'm wrong, and, you know, I just I, I want to let you know it can be liberating and it can be freeing to, you know, be held accountable when your dead ball's on wrong about uh, something. And this might be a little petty. But I, I, you know, I think uh, I think Lucius could probably, you know, uh, vouch for the fact that that's on brand for me. You know, I can be petty. I can go petty on you. Would you like to eat some crow regarding Kristaps Porzingis? Mm. You know, when when he was uh, traded to the Wizard, it was the greatest thing to happen to the Mavs this season. Finding a team willing to take him and give you anything of value in return out of everything that's happened. They all, you know, you know, Luca taking the next step, Jason Kidd being here, the defense adjusting. I, I think the trade of Porzingis is an equal part of that. They each get 25% responsibility for why the Mavs are here. Even if you think KP is somehow good at basketball, right? That's not the topic here. The chemistry was so bad, the Mavs were brilliant to trade him. That's your crow eating topic at 877-881-1053. You love it. You eat it up when I have to eat crow. <laughs> for guaranteeing a loss without Luka in game two against the Utah Jazz. Now it's uh, time for me to ask you, and if if you don't think you have to, we go to the ringer.com. Headline, the Mavericks finally built the right machine for Luka to drive. They write, the turning point in Dallas redesign came February 10th, 22, when the Mavs traded former Doncic co-star Chris Dobbs Porzingis to the Wizards. To that point in the season, the Mavs had been outscored when Porzingis and Doncic shared the floor. When Doncic played without Porzingis, the Mavs had a dominant net rating of 13.1. They were 13.1 points per 100 possessions better than their opposition when uh, Doncic played without Porzingis. When Porzingis played without Doncic, the number fell to a miserable minus 13.2. The pair was not working. After the trade, the Mavs jumped from 24th in three-point shooting to 9th. Before February 10th, Porzingis ranked 7th in the league in post-up frequency. And while such actions yielded a passable .961 points per chance, they took the ball out of Doncic's hands, and Porzingis' presence on the court in that no-man's-land of the high post muddled the floor balance required to optimize Doncic. From February 10th onward, Luka thrived. He ended up leading the NBA in both frequency and efficiency for isolations. Ooh. It goes on and on. Uh, and you can read the whole article on the ringer.com. The Mavs finally built the right machine for Luka Doncic to drive. But I, you know, looking back on all the great things that have happened, I think Kristaps Porzingis being dealt is just as important as any of the other guys. What do you say? Oh, 100%. I mean, you just laid it out pretty clearly there. The difference in uh, the the team numbers, the overall numbers, and then also just the Luka numbers themselves. And, and the, you already you had a window into it because you played without Porzingis so often, you could get a good feel for, okay, when he does play, this is how we perform. When he doesn't play, this is how we perform. And it was very obvious even before the trade, okay, we're better when he's not on the floor. We're just we're just better, and that's before you've added a Dinwiddie and a Bertans. This is just no Porzingis. This Mavs team is better, and then you factor in being able to get a, a Dinwiddie and, and what he was able to add, according to cl uh, cleaning the glass. Um, Dallas marks the first stop in his career in which he has played big minutes as a wing, and though his assist rate was below his career average, it was in the 98th percentile for his new position. So he had never shot so efficiently, and he hadn't turned it over so infrequently since he played nine games back in the 15-16 season. So, I mean, and, and Dinwiddie commands fewer touches than Porzingis did, and so he's been excellent as just sort of a connecting piece between Doncic and then all the other shooters. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, the, the, the trade, there is, I would put it as, 0% chance we're talking about Mavs Game 1 Western Conference Finals right now had that trade not gone down. Wow, that's strong. Yeah, I never would have believed that this would have happened. You know, because we were talking about it, you know, when Gavin, you and I were doing shows, you said, you know, you've got to make this happen. Somehow, some way, this front office has got to make this trade. We kind of, you know, they always talk about the relationships between Luca and Porzingis and everybody's like, no, no, it's not bad. It's not this, not that. You know, he's come on our station, even talked about it. 
I still believe there was something there. But I, the thing that was the most impressive, not so much trading him, but like I said, I didn't never, I never thought it was going to get done. I never ever Same. believed. I never believed that Mark Cuban was going to let go of this. I didn't think he had any as as good a value as he ended up having. Yeah, we talked. We asked Sean McDonough about that last yeah. year when he joined us and said the value zero. Nobody would take the guy the right contract now. Contract and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, th- th- to me. You know, maybe you, you got Dinwiddie a little banged up, you know, team kind of desperate to move on from him. You had a team here down the road that was interested in moving on from Porzingis. That makes the best deal sometimes. Okay, 407, I'll eat some crow. I thought he would be the new Jordan with Pippen. They were more like two wrestlers who were first forced to team, where, uh, team up where uh, one was the face and the other was the heel. Okay, we still need a two and a legit big. No doubt about that. Yeah, Yeah, and that's the exciting thing is they're already this good without a great roster construction and not much balance. 817 Crows best with ketchup. I was dead balls wrong on that trade. Thank you. (laughs) Out of the 817. More of a mustard guy myself. (laughs) How about this 469 guy? No crow for me. My name on Twitter was literally Bleep Porzingis. (laughs) 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 Yeah, he was right there with me. I know some of you were. I was super stoked when we traded for Porzingis. I was just as stoked when we traded him away mm-hmm. uh, at 877-881-1053. That is the truckwreck.com fan text. A lot of people saying no crow for me. I was thrilled. Glad he's gone. Well, I, he just he wore us down, man. Like for you knew the potential that Porzingis was going to be able to have if if him and Luca could coexist and actually play a considerable amount of games together you knew what the talent was and we all felt like even when the trade went down and by then we were ready to move on for Porzingis for basically anything in return I think we all felt in that moment hey this is probably something that is going to lower this year's ceiling with an opportunity to really yeah uh, you know ha- in the in the coming off seasons give you more flexibility so the the big surprise to me even as somebody who was fired up when Porzingis was finally out of here is that we are here right now because it felt like okay not that you're punting on this season but you're willing to say okay we're probably not going to have as much this season success as we would have hoped in order to maybe get more success over the next year or two and it turns out it was just ended up being the best of both worlds. You get to get rid of Porzingis, and we find ourselves one round away from the the NBA Finals. Like it's just like that is the big surprise. Yeah, I didn't to know me. it would open it up that much.